Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'd like to show you how to design a reinforced concrete beam for shear. So we're gonna follow the ACI 318 code and we're gonna start with demands with a shear envelope and go through the whole design process. So let's get started. To begin, we'll be using the ACI 318 19 code. There have been shear changes from 2014 to 2019, specifically in the concrete capacity in shear, but we'll talk about that when we get there. We're gonna use normal strength materials and normal weight materials. So F prime C is going to be 4,000. We're gonna have 60 KSI steel and our objective is to design our stirrups satisfying our shear demands. Numbers to keep in mind as we go through this problem, we're going to have a web width of eight inches and a depth to steel D of 20.625 inches. We'll be designing using number three stirrups. Our load is listed over here. We're gonna have 1.6 kips per foot in dead load and two kips per foot in live load, which can be patterned, which means we don't have to place it along the entire span. It might be in my interest to only place it on, for example, half the span. We have a 20 foot span length and 12 inch bearing pads on either end, which means the clear span for this is 19 feet. We'll start off this design by talking about the demands using a shear envelope. Now, this is a little bit different from a shear diagram because we're looking at, instead of just the shear under one load scenario, we're looking at the worst case possible shear at all locations along the length of the beam. So I'm gonna start my discussion with just looking at the dead load. Now, dead load is applied everywhere and I don't really have a choice in that. So if I apply my dead load and unfactored, it's going to be 1.6 kips per foot. I'll see that I have reactions of 16 kips on either end. And that's all we can say for dead load. However, for live load, we can make a decision. So for live load, if I want to create the maximum live load at any given end, I would put the live load everywhere along my beam, which is 2.0 kips per foot. And that gives me reactions at the two ends of 20 kips. So Fundamentally, I have 20 kips of shear at those two ends. However, if I want the worst case shear at the mid span of the beam, I'm not gonna place live load everywhere. I'm only gonna place live load, for example, along half of the beam. So in this case, if we load half the beam, 2.0 kips per foot, and we check the reactions, we'll find that this is 15 kips. And over here, we have a five kip reaction. Now, at this end, obviously that's less shear than this case up here, which had 20 versus 15. But at mid span right here, my shear is going to be five kips, which is of course greater than the mid span shear of zero in the fully loaded case. So if I look at my worst case shear at the ends, we'll put our factored load. So 1.2 times dead is going to be 16 kips of dead plus 1.6 times live, which is 20 kips gives me 51.6 kips of shear here at the ends, and it's equal on the other end. I'm only just gonna plot half the diagram here. Now at mid span, we have 1.2 times dead, but there's zero shear due to dead load because there's zero shear in my shear diagram right here. However, live load has a possibility of five kips at that location. That would be the worst case scenario, which gets me eight kips there at that location. So to draw my shear envelope, I can connect those two points with a straight line. Now in reality, the envelope is actually gonna curve slightly downward for the simply supported beam, but the straight line is conservative and much easier to deal with. So now that we've done our structural analysis, let's dive into what the code says about our demands. So we've seen that my worst shear is 51.6 kips, but that's measured right at the center line of my support. And in reality, that position is not in shear. So if we look at the load out here in this region, all that load is not going through shear in this critical section right here. It's in fact, just traveling straight down to my support, which means that I don't need to consider that as load. I can cut out that off in my shear diagram. Now that position of my critical section is a distance D away from the face of the support. So for this problem, D is 20.625 inches. That's the depth to the center of my steel. And altogether, if I go from the center of my support out to the edge of the support, and then all the way out to my critical section, that is 2.22 feet out. So I'm gonna draw a straight line here where it intercepts at 2.22 feet, and we'll find that my shear along that line is 41.6 kips. So that's actually gonna be the ultimate demand that I need to design this beam for, for shear 
at those ends. Next, I would like to see if I need to include stirrups at all. So if we look in section 9631, it has this limit here for VU, which says if you're under that limit, you do not need to provide minimum shear reinforcement. So we'll quick check this number. We'll have our fee factor of 0.75 for shear. Lightweight factor is one times the square root of 4,000 PSI is our concrete strength, multiplied by BW is eight inches and D is 20.625 inches. This number is 7,800 pounds or equivalently 7.8 kips. So I see 7.8 is right down here. I am going to have to place minimum stirrups everywhere for this particular problem. So that wraps up our discussion of demands. Now we can talk capacity and we're gonna start with concrete capacity because of course I haven't designed any stirrups yet. In the 2019 code, there are two different cases where we can calculate our concrete capacity, whether or not we provide minimum stirrups. Now, as we just checked, I must provide minimum stirrups everywhere for this beam. So the second case is never going to apply for this beam. So we're not gonna calculate that. However, we still have an option of two different expressions and largely they depend on our reinforcement ratio rho w. So let's go ahead and calculate rho w. Rho w is going to be the area of steel divided by BWD. So I'm providing 3.16 square inches of steel. That is my flexural reinforcement right here. And then it's going to be divided by eight inch web and a 20.625 inch depth. And that is 0 0.019. Now, if we find that this number is greater than 0 0.0156, then the second of these equations is going to control. So this is going to give me a larger capacity. So that's what I'm going to use. The only thing that I'll note in this equation is that there's a term NU right here, which is your axial force in your beam. And for this problem, NU is zero. So we're just going to get rid of that term. So now let's go ahead and calculate VC using that second expression. I have eight times the lightweight factor of one. I need my reinforcement ratio of 0 0.019 to the one third power, and then times the square root of 4,000 PSI, multiplied by eight inches and 20.625 inches deep. And this is going to get us a capacity of 22,300 pounds or 22.3 kips. So there's my concrete capacity that I'm going to be using going forward. Now that we have VC, we're gonna check a few shear limits before we actually design any stirrups. So our first limit here, I'm going to call the hard limit. According to the code, you are not allowed to have a demand above this number. And if you do, you're gonna to have to change your concrete strength, your web width BW or your depth D to make this happen. So if we check this number, our fee factor is 0 0.75. VC, we just calculated as 22.3 kips. And if we plug and chug the numbers through here, it's going to be 83.5 kips. So altogether is VU less than or equal to 79.4 kips? Yes, it is. So we are okay for that limit. Our second limit down here is known as the spacing limit. And this is going to determine what my maximum spacing of stirrups is going to be. So now I get to check is VU less than or equal to 48.1 kips? Again, yes, it is. So that limit is right about here and all my demands are less than that. Now that number is going to get used in table 97622. Our required VS is less than or equal to four root F prime C BWD. We have a non pre-stressed beam. And so my spacing limits along the length are D over two and across the width it's D or we can check it against 24 inches. But if we look at D over two, for example, D over two is gonna be 10.3125 inches. And so clearly that's going to control instead of 24 inches. So now that we have that spacing limit checked, I wanna check one more limit regarding our minimum steel. So if we look in section 9634, we have a minimum steel provided, which is the maximum of these two numbers. And the code specifies this as an AV min over our spacing S. So let's go ahead and calculate this. If we calculate out those two numbers, it's gonna be the maximum of the first term is 0 0.0063 inches. And that second term is 0 0.00 six, seven inches. The only thing I'll note in this expression is make sure that F Y T is going to be in PSI because as always implied in these equations, all stresses are given in PSI. So doing that, we see that our maximum value is 0 0.0067. And so therefore AV min 
over S is equal to 0 0.0067 inches. Now I'd like to flip that around and find my spacing requirement. So S is going to be less than or equal to AV divided by 0 0.0067 inches. And I now need to know what AV is equal to. For this problem, I see that I have two legs for my stirrup and it's a number three. So a number three bar has an area of 0.11. So AV in this case is 0 0.22 inches squared. That's two times 0.11 square inches. So therefore this is 0 0.22 inches squared divided by 0 0.0067 inches. And we'll find that S has to be less than or equal to 33 inches to meet my minimum steel requirements. Now, of course, D over two controls. And so that we found was just above 10 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check my capacity for the least amount of steel that I can get away with. And that is equal to a 10 inch spacing roughly. So let's go ahead and check our capacity for a 10 inch spacing and see if that's good enough for us. Now we already have our VC. All we need to do is calculate a VS. This expression has not changed between 2014 and 2019. So it's just our area of steel is 0.22 square inches in shear and then 60 KSI steel. And then my distance D is 20.625 inches divided by my chosen spacing of 10 inches. And we'll find that's 27.2 kips. Adding that all together in my total shear capacity, this is going to be just phi times VC plus VS. And we know all those quantities. So phi factor is always 0.75. VC is 22.3 kips. VS is 27.2 kips. And added all together, this is 37.2 kips. Now that's all well and good. I can plot it on my diagram here and I can see that it does work for a good portion of my beam, but not all my beams. So over here on the right, my spacing of 10 inches is going to satisfy any requirements that I have, but of course it's no good over here. So in those first three and a quarter feet about, I am going to need to provide more stirrups there. So to find how many stirrups I need to provide, I'm going to take my shear capacity equation and I'm gonna flip that around so I solve for my VS. And in this case, VS has to be greater than or equal to VU, which is my demand, divided by phi minus VC. So solving that, I know my demand is 41.6 kips at most. I'll divide that by 0.75 and then I will subtract off 22.3 kips, which is my concrete contribution and this is equal to 33.2 kips. So that means my steel has to provide at least 33.2 kips. My steel provides this expression right here, but I would rather solve that for S. So if we solve this for S, we'll find that S is going to be less than or equal to AV times FYT D divided by V sub S. So plugging all that in, my S is gonna be less than or equal to 0 0.22 square inches for my area of steel, 60 KSI for the stress, depth D is 20.625 inches, and then VS we just calculated was 33.2 kips. And so therefore S has to be less than or equal to 8.21 inches. Now I'm going to select eight inches because that's a little bit easier to do the layout. So if we select an eight inch spacing and then repeat the process that we saw on the previous slide, we'll note that our capacity is going to be 42.3 kips using an eight inch spacing. And that does satisfy us everywhere. That's gonna put us right up here at a spacing of eight inches. So now that we see eight inches works everywhere, but if I want an efficient design, I can get away with 10 inches in most of my beam. So what we're gonna do now is space out those stirrups. So as we can see in the design here, I can get away with just a simple 10 inch spacing pretty much almost up to the end of my beam. In this case, I chose 40 inches from the end to switch over from my 10 inch spacing to my eight inch spacing. So I'll go up here and then I'll draw along the line there for my eight inch capacity to see that my capacity is sufficient along the entire length of the beam. Now, it does look like we have overkill right here, but again, I saw that I did have to require minimum stirrups in that region and my ma maximum spacing was about 10 inches. So that's really the best that I can get away with. So overkill perhaps, but also it makes a good shear design.
And that wraps up this example for sheer design of reinforced concrete beams. I hope this has been useful for you and that you've learned something. If you found that that's true, go ahead and hit, hit that like button or subscribe if you have not already done so. And I will see you next time.